No hard feelings, guys, but this is my gig. Trust me, Nero. This one's gonna be a little too much for you. Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Devil May Cry 5. So after we took a quick break from Dante, we're jumping back into his diverging point. That means we get to dive deeper into Dr. Faust. This might be the first time that a devil arm comes from a regular enemy, the Fausts, from way back in the day. I don't know if I'm forgetting one. And one of the things that I love about this right. is the it's scarf. It's like Journey's scarf in that it can get longer. Uh, its length depends on how many orbs you have. And that's because the gimmick is that it consumes red orbs as ammunition, like Giltos in a Final Fantasy. But you can also make your orbs back and then some, so it's a risk-reward weapon. So first and foremost, uh, Holding Fire shoots it and consumes orbs every second. Uh, you can set the hat on someone, and when it's on them, they wear the cowboy hat just like the Fausts did. If you hit them while the hat is set, you get a bunch of orbs. And if you take damage, you will lose orbs. Risk and reward. Uh, a big theme, considering that's also true of keeping the pets active, which leaves V vulnerable and unguarded, and the Devil Breakers from Nero. Uh, so when you set the hat, the main Faust hat returns to you. And if you time a button press just right like that, you do a Mad Hatter, which draws enemies in. Uh, it's not as dramatic as like the Aquila stuff from DMC, where you just pulled everyone in to spin on them, but there is something similar in Gunslinger, where you get an AoE hat set. Uh, and then also in Gunslinger, you get that auto-attacking sheet of orbs. You can put a satellite out, which is cute. But this is my favorite part of Faust. Red Hot Knight. It can consume up to 150,000. But for every orb you spend, you can make bank back. It's, uh, I think that the, the subtitle is even something like the Alchemical Gambler's Garb or something. And it's funny that that's associated with Faust and Dante. Uh, since gambling is usually associated with Nero, that's all how uh, Nero's moves are named. Oh, and this guy is just not landing where I need him to. It's partially my fault for the stingers, but then also he just kind of bounced off the wall a little. <laughs> Did drop the triple S. And that is not even everything that we get to dive into today. Um, because I also picked up a few new things for Sin DT. That's right, we're still not done getting new stuff for it. Um, by the way, this level branches a little bit. And there are some mutually exclusive paths. Like, there is one that leads to a blue orb, but it means that you can't get the secret mission, and I'm way more interested in the secret mission. So you have to do multiple run-throughs of this stage to get everything. Uh, so, let's so let's show some Sin DT stuff once the last enemy spawns in. Here we go. Okay, so first, we have uh, Sin Inferno, but wait, that's not even my favorite thing, it's this! <laughs> yeah, I love that! It brings me so much joy. Also, I didn't get the input for the finisher. I think I was hitting them like multiple times just a split second off from each other. Instead of holding them both at once. <laughs> Either way, fucking demolition is so cool. And it's really strong, especially as single target. But if you can catch multiple people in that black hole, or in that rad multicolored hole, it is my fucking jam. And we're still not done with new stuff. Not for Sin DT, not for weapons. Uh, we're, Faust is fairly shallow. Uh, it's much more about what you do with it rather than what you're capable of with it. Like, it's not a super complex weapon. So we've seen all there really is to see with Faust. We have moves left to see with Sin DT. We still have 
one entire melee weapon, and it's one of the most complex. Uh, and then we also still have stuff to see with uh, the new and improved Royal Guard. Something that you only get at level 4. I just want to build a stock up first because you need a stock to show this. Uh, I've done it, but I haven't pointed it out before. So we're just going to wait for someone to come at me. Or wait for this boy to get up. Or not giving him breathing room. That's such a shame. Come on. Someone come at me. There we go. Another. I rolled that, but yeah. Back. Lock on and the style button in Royal Guard is that. It's Royal Revenge, where you assume the stance and just wait. And the second someone comes in at you, you will parry and automatically release. And it's so good. It feels so good. It rocks. Uh, now, after that fight, we should be coming up to the secret mission somewhere around here. Should be on one of these drops. Uh, there's a big cluster of Rite of Orbs that I'm looking for. It's right across from this, I think. Yeah, it's that platform which uh, you can tell from the color palette. It's going to crumble as soon as we step on it. So now we drop back here. And then there's a little bit more platforming to do. Nothing complicated. And this is secret mission number 12 of 12. Collect a set amount of red orbs. You can only do this once you get Dr. Faust. Unless there is some cool little quirky alternative method I'm not privy to. But it's designed to be done with Dr. Faust. And can be done really easily uh, with just a simple Mad Hatter. You set it Mad Hatter and you get enough orbs to complete it. Just right off the bat. Uh, you need to collect 800 orbs before before uh, that enemy dies from the damage you inflict. And that is 12 out of 12, unless I missed a secret mission in the LP. Uh, in which case, I'll just go back for it at some point. I just have to double check and make sure I did all of them on screen, on camera. That's the final one, pretty simple. And we'll take this just for good measure. If for no other reason than to power up uh, Faust. And we still have to get all the EX taunts, which are 300k apiece. And uh, actually, level 4 of Dr. Faust is pretty expensive. It just makes the risk and reward a little bit better for you. Better odds, more favorable. And one more little thing about Dr. Faust. Uh, Matt Walker, one of the, the producers at Capcom, tried to spin the Faust intro scene as not being a Michael Jackson reference. Uh, but instead a reference to a Japanese pop star who wore a cowboy hat and would mimic Michael Jackson. But like, come on! Dante even does the little hee-hee! <laughs> I don't know if he just didn't want to cop to it for legal reasons, kind of like how Yakuza has Miracle Johnson. I don't know if he just didn't want to cop to it for that reason or because the HBO document the documentary came out uh, right before DMC5 released and they wanted to deflect some from some of the controversy. But come on! There might be a shred of truth to the thing about the Japanese pop star. I don't know that for sure to be true or untrue, but it is at least also 100% absolutely a Michael Jackson reference too. We're seeing a real familiar color palette all of a sudden, and one of the harder fights. I would actually uh, uh, consider this to be one of the harder missions of the game, just because this is where they really start getting wild with the enemy compositions. Like, it probably has some of the hardest non-bloody palace. Uh, oops, didn't mean to do that. Non-bloody palace. Uh, just enemy encounters in the game. Especially down here with multiple nobodies and uh, the Baphomet upgrade. Nobody's one-on-one -on -one or can be a little bit no annoying, but 
nobody's in groups are a problem, nobody's paired with other enemy types and in groups, that can be uh, a real motherfucker. Shit. Like so. Should probably focus you from the beginning, especially because the nobody is content right now to just chill for a second. There we go. We're okay-ish now. Oh, wait, no. We're... Oh! Wow, I forgot how fast that is. Damn. Yeah, it has ways of going wrong. But I think that's the last fight of the mission. I mean, aside from the boss. Which, based on other things that have happened in the game and some knowledge of the other Devil May Cries, you might be able to hazard a guess who's coming up. Oh well, better get to it. Who or what, I should say. I really can't wait for this one. It's our first Dante boss in a minute. And anything else around? Nope. So we're going straight down. We don't need to visit the Statue of Time for anything. Like your master's got you on a pretty short leash. Come on, little puppy. I'll take you out for a walk. Come on, let's go. You have fought our king in the past. They were weak, but we will feast on your flesh and gnaw on your bones. the strongest in the litter. Looks like we're gonna need a bigger leash. Come. That explosion is so cool! And honestly, everything about the cutscene and listen for the theme... This game is so fan y but in all the right ways. So King Cerberus, King of the Cerberus Tribe. Unleashed right off the bat, starts with the rage explosion. And yeah, try elemental, of course. Cool as hell. And really, a perfect boss to just lay the fuck into. So King Cerberus is actually a much easier fight for the point you're at in the game than Cerberus was in DMC3. Because in, in 3, he's your first boss. He's kind of like a brick wall in that game. It's meant to be your first real challenge. And that makes sense. You have so many fewer tools by that point in 3 than this point here in 5. It makes sense in another way, too, since Dante is a character has grown so much and become so much more powerful than he was early in 3. He has more mastery over all, all of these abilities now, and the player does too. Yeah, finish it with this! Yeah! God, I love this game! And then, like, on a more specific level, he's just a more traditional giant enemy type of boss, which means having things like enemy step at this point is invaluable because you'll always be able to enemy step and reset whenever uh, you want with no precision needed. Because his hitbox is just huge, or her box. 
Um, and that combined with how good Air Trick is at keeping you in and how it interacts with his hurt box and collision means you essentially get this simple teleport that almost circle strafes him. It does not mean he isn't cool and flashy as hell, though. He rocks! Like, everything about this game is cool as hell. Plus to his arrow. This is really no problem, though. A few more hits and we'll have Sin DT again, and I have a, I have a way that I want to finish this. I know exactly how I want to finish this fight. It's a shame that we're not going to hear him shit-talk some of the other demons that much. Like, he'll shit-talk Burial, he'll shit-talk Bale from 4. As his, uh, his phase transitions. But next time- oh, he's going into Ice. God, it's such a good-looking explosion! Oh, that's nice. This is the flashiest game! Oh, we have to come down a bit. He's facing in the wrong direction for the Helm Breaker. <laughs> yeah, we're getting there. Uh, uh. After this next transition, he'll be low enough for me to do what I want. No, 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 no. I've been holding Sin DT while fighting for like a half a minute now. There we go. Just waiting. And you get that pop. That pop. Mmm. Mmm. Let's go. It's a game. Mmm. I'm the first one here. I like that. <laughs> that is gonna do it for now. Holy shit, King Cerberus is not just the nunchucks from 3. It's so much more! Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, favorite, ring the bell, all that all that stuff. It helps. Really does. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.